man are you into you know looking into becoming a salesperson or investing or entrepreneur thing man you're in treat because today i'm super super excited because i'm going to meet very successful entrepreneur here in windsor who own one of the biggest uh, you know supplement brand out there in canada which is very known canadian protein the owner who also like own 100 million plus real estate portfolio so today stay with me you're going to hear his story how he's transitioning into investing heavily um, in canada and also now into us so stay tuned check out First of all, thank you so much, Dan. Uh, I've been waiting for this interview. <laughs> you won't believe. Like I've been secretly following you for, <laughs> I think, since I started real estate, that's which funny. is like four years ago. Oh, that's it, eh? Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. It's not too long ago, but yeah, yeah. you know, because since I was uh, getting into, all I heard is like one who is the top entrepreneur in Canada, like in Windsor. Okay, yeah. Uh, was like. Oh, you're going to beat this guy, like the, Lam <laughs> That's so the Lambo guy. I, I didn't even know your name until like, I think uh, when I started following you on Instagram. Okay. That's when I know your name. Okay. So I will still call you as a Lambo. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I'm cool so, with that. Ma so, so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, because, appreciate you know, it. This is more like selfish uh, interview that I'm doing, which is like, I want to learn about you. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, who are you and how did you get into all this shit? <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, no, I appreciate that, man. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to hear, you know, obviously. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think a, a pretty big misconception that a lot of people have of me is like, I have this, uh, natural, you know, ability or, or natural like hunger to, to, you know, accomplish and, and, uh, you know, go after my goals and stuff like that. And, and I, I don't, it's not like a natural thing I for me. So. Yeah, it's not. It's not like a natural thing for me. I'm, I'm no different than you know anybody else. Um, I think. I think there's a couple things that set me apart. It's you know I think I have a fear of failure. A lot of people told me I'd be a failure in life and everything like that. So I. I, I think it's. It's. It's awesome proving people wrong and. Yeah. Uh, doing it by rather than saying it, I think doing is a lot better. And um, yeah, man. I you know at the end of the day, I, I ended up dropping out of school um, in my early twenties and something like that was, you know, I think detrimental to my success, if you want to call it that, because I didn't have a plan B and I didn't have some cushy ass fallback. So you gotta and, figure it out. Yeah. So I had no, I had no other option but to figure it out for myself. And, um, you know, it, it, it forced me to, to do things. So right? what do you used to do? Like, you know, take, take me back to, you know, um, before you got into real estate, before you got yeah. into, uh, you know, Canadian protein. Yeah. Um, what do you used to do? Yeah. So I, the, the normal stuff, right. You know, I, I was doing, uh, you know, little bullshit kind of kid jobs. I was working at Zares. I was, so I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say I didn't have certain aspirations. So my, my mom came from a really poor area in Portugal. Mm -hmm. Uh, so she, she immigrated here oh, and okay. for the longest time she would always tell me like, you know, life's going to be easier if you work really hard and have money in the bank or whatever. So I, I worked nonstop. That's typical immigrant. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Right. And you know, my dad was, you know, poor growing up and everything, not, not necessarily poor, but, um, you know, not, not even middle-class when he was growing up. My, my, my grandfather's family's Pretty from Ireland. Paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, probably. Yeah. My, you know, my grandfather's family immigrated from, you know, England and Ireland and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, they, they came here with nothing too. And, um, but they didn't have that same mentality that my mom had where, you know, and my grandmother, where they were like, Hey, you know, save as much money as you can work as hard as you can, because life's going to be easier for you if you at least have something. Right. Yeah. So, so that's what I did. I, you know, I, I worked as much as I could, any kind of extra shift. I, I, I had the option of getting, I would, um, 
you know, even when I was growing up, I, I didn't, th- this is something that I actually do regret a little bit. You know, I even didn't go out with, you know, friends a lot, um, to save money. I didn't go on vacations with them. A lot of my friends were going on, you know, in high school, going on vacations. So you were stuff just like, that. like literally following your mom's advice. Kind of. Yeah. I would, I would work as much as I could. I even, I, at one point when my friends and, and I were kind of like of the age of going downtown and maybe even a little bit before I ended up getting a bouncing job at one of the bars and I convinced them to go to that bar all the time so I could party wow. with them and work. So, you know, I was always kind of, and then even when I was working, uh, my dad was, my dad was working at GM at the time and, and we were working, I, I ended up getting in at TPT after high school, temporary part-time. Mm-hmm. And, um, I would actually go there even when I wasn't scheduled for a shift, Did I would go there and sit in the lunchroom and wait for somebody to want to leave wow. and fill their gaps. Or I would go around and walk around the line and, and, and personally ask every person on the line if they wanted to go home. So, Man. because I wanted the shift and I wanted the money. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so I was always like a, a really hard, even when I was like, man, I used to deliver the papers up until like halfway through high school. Wow. I was delivering the papers. I was working at, uh, Zares and I was, uh, washing dishes on the weekends. Oh, so my. I ended up, uh, so I, I ended up actually taking two paper routes in the morning and I, I convinced the Windsor star to give me two paper routes cause I was fast enough cause I would rollerblade and do it. So I could still do two routes for this in the same time as somebody could do one cause I could carry enough papers at once and I would rollerblade even in the winter time or whenever, and I would be able to get the, get it done quick enough and, and, and make it to school. So I was always like pretty hard working, but I never was like entrepreneurial right? God. It was only entrepreneurial when I, I ended up dropping out of school and I didn't have another option. Yeah. You know, that's another thing, right? Like uh, actually I didn't know all this stuff. Like yeah. this is super impressive for yeah. me and super um, interesting to know that because, you know, f- when I was like thinking of getting into real estate, like, um, oh, maybe it's not for me mm-hmm. or like, you know, I, it's like some smart people. I, I really thought like you, you're coming from a humble background where you, you had everything in plate and you just yeah. got into entrepreneur, but this is super, yeah. you know, encouraging, yeah. especially a lot of my audience who are, you know, watching my videos, they're like, you know, young and hungry, like, yeah. want to do. So, you know, if you're watching this, see, there is no magic pill. You yeah. got to work hard. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and then, uh, you know, when I dropped out of school and everything, um, I ended up starting a, a supplement company or a supplement store. I wasn't mm-hmm. even a company at that point, but it was a supplement store. You mean like selling the supplements? Supp- the sell- yeah, it was called True Supplements at the time. Okay. It wasn't called Canadian Protein. So I ended up going through a name change, but um, it was a small store on Dougal Avenue yeah, in Windsor yeah, here. Know, yeah. And uh, I ended up opening that store and um, the owner of the, the, the plaza mm-hmm. was a big real estate investor, like really big. God. And... Um, and I knew that I ended up finding it out and, um, the, the way that I ended up getting kind of having a conversation with him. So l- let me backtrack a little bit for, through, for the longest time, I was actually like super interested in real estate. And the reason why I was super interested in real estate was because I'd read these okay. books or I'd see these guys. <laughs> yeah. And, and at that point there, there wasn't like a lot of tech going on, at least, yeah. at least to my knowledge, right? The, like the internet yeah. wasn't as like. You know, in the early 2000s, it wasn't like, yeah, it wasn't like, like yeah, it wasn't as accessible. It wasn't as like prolific as it is now. You didn't have like crazy apps being developed and you didn't have like, yeah, you didn't have any of that kind of shit going on. So when you look up, like what was the the best way and fastest way to build wealth? It was always real estate, right? So I had this like affinity for real estate for, for a really long time. Only because I was like, well, if I can't do anything else, f- it, I might as well just do that, right? Yeah. And I'm, I'm a pretty hard worker. I could kind of figure out how to do shit. So, um, so I ended up with the supplement store. Mm-hmm. I ended up getting in contact with the guy that owned the retail store, obviously, because he would come in and want his rent. Yeah. So at one point, I was like, well, f- it, I want to sit down with this guy. This guy's got like hundreds of units in the city. He was like, wow. at one point, like one of Windsor's biggest uh, investors here. And... Um, I ended up withholding rent from him for like, it got to the point where I think it was like three months I withheld rent and he would come in and he would be like, Hey, you know, I'm here for rent. And I was like, listen, I got, I got, you owned that many units and he's still collecting his, he was, he was only collecting rent in that unit because why was he only doing it? Um, he was only doing it in that unit because his office, Mm. uh, I think was in the UPS store. 
There's a God. UPS store there. So, um, and I think it also was because I wasn't paying him. So he was coming <laughs> to me like directly and he would, you know, threaten me and be like, Hey, listen, I'm going to lock the doors. And I said, all right, we'll do whatever you got to do, but you're going to sit down with me before I give you this money. Oh, and, wow. I would, so and I would, you're yeah, holding just I, to I would wave it in his face. I'd put it like right in his face. I'd be like, oh, listen, wow. this is your money. This is interesting. And he's like, I, well, you got to give it to me. I was like, it's right here. Come and get it. But but you're you're gonna sit down with me before you get this money. Obviously, I knew I could kick his ass. Wow. But I knew that he wasn't gonna like. <laughs> I knew he wasn't coming after that money until he was gonna sit down with me, right? So uh, we ended up sitting down and we sat down for like an hour down the street at Tim Hortons and and uh, you know he didn't we didn't have like this crazy conversation, but um, I ended up buying my first portfolio of property from him and it was uh, 15 units in the Lagoyo building on wow. the river in downtown. So, and at the time this was like 2007, 2008. And so the market here in Windsor, so you right away bought 15 units, right away bought Did 15 you owned units. anything else. Before I had that? not owned anything else. Okay. Yeah. So- Shake me this because yeah. this is something insane. I never yeah. heard anyone did that crazy, yeah. right? What gave you that confidence to go do all of a sudden that many, right? Like what if something goes wrong? What <laughs> if the tenants does not pay you? Yeah. I, I I was willing to take a risk because I didn't have anything else. At that point, I had dropped out of school. Uh, I, I didn't have, I, I, I had nothing else to, to go. I, like literally, I dropped out of school. I bought some basic tools and that was it. You know, that's a common um you know, the, the uh, personality trader that I see in a lot of people who are successful, they're like, fuck it, what the worst could happen? Yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. So I'll tell you kind of like my mindset around mm-hmm. that time. So the the U.S. was going through a big mortgage crisis, right? Yeah. Financial crisis and everything. Just in 2008. Right yeah, right then. Yeah. And what that ended up doing was it affected, I don't know how much it actually affected the auto industry, mm-hmm. but the auto industry was significant, like our auto industry in Windsor was significantly obviously tied to uh, Detroit. Detroit. Yeah. And Detroit was just tanked. Yeah. Like Detroit was in the absolute shitter. Uh, the, the, the big three, yeah. oh yeah, the big three was, was uh, you know, they were getting bailed out by the government. They were, it, it was, it was a, an insane time, right? Yeah. So naturally that whole economic crisis took Windsor down with it because we were so tied to the success yep. of the U.S. and the U.S. automotive industry. So uh, that's when I ended up buying in. So, you know, I'm buying some of the units I bought for 40 grand, 20 grand, you know. So uh, I, I didn't I didn't have one person tell me that, that was a good idea. Not one. And I had a lot of people tell me that I'm, 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 yeah. I'm going to go broke. <laughs> uh, I, I'm making the worst decision of my life. And, and my mentality was, well, it's in the downtown core, yeah. even though Windsor, you know, wasn't the greatest downtown core in the world. It's still, you know, half of the units, even a couple more than half of the units were on the water, facing the water. You're right looking across to Detroit Renaissance yeah. Center. What's the worst that can happen? Even if, say, for example, the real estate market continues to tank, um, like what's that property? I'm going to lose what? what $5,000 the- per unit on, on 20000 already? Better? What's that? What are they rented? 400 500 okay. some of them so you're so, getting something yeah i was oh yeah i was getting something and even still i was like okay so if, even if it tanks another quarter percent or 25 percent say say if just that's bad yeah. to tank 25 percent is, is insane right yeah especially in real estate exactly yeah like the, the biggest the big overall the u.s only went down eight percent during the 2008 market crisis wow now different markets took bigger hits yeah but overall collectively the u.s only really went down eight percent so so you know knowing some of those numbers kind of gave me a little bit of solace and 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 confidence knowing like even if my shit did tank Hmm. even by half so say that 20 or forty thousand dollar unit tanked by half which is insane right that would never happen i'm still like it's still 20 like it's it's 20 grand i'm losing yeah so even though that's a big number it's not crazy Whereas if you have a property that's half a million and it tanks by half, you're 250 grand you're losing, right? Yeah. So, and even still, I could still rent that unit for say, not even far from what I was even currently getting, even if the market didn't even tank anymore. Yep. So I wasn't really that scary and it was even less scary because I didn't have any, f-ing el- any anything else to do. <laughs> so it really wasn't like that crazy, right? It was either kind of like a sink or swim kind of scenario because I didn't have an education and I dropped out of school. So I was like, let's just do it right and um so i and yeah fast forward now like you know it's been like 12 years that you have done this so 
if you would have done differently go back and do something different yeah would you do the same shit or you know would i would have bought more <laughs> okay. i'm serious like i would have bought i would have bought more property during that so yeah but like what, what i ended up doing there too was like i bought the i bought the uh portfolio there and i ended up rehabbing the the some of the units myself and at that point in you time mean like you're fixing the toilets yeah you're fixing the- yeah i was fixing the toilets i was on the side you're running your business as well yeah yeah so oh, i was okay. working like both of them eight hours a day almost and so 16 20 hours a day and yeah. um it's a no secret right? yeah no, that's yeah. the thing right if yeah. you're if you want something in life you just work for yeah it. yeah that's it yeah and then uh yeah so i was rehabbing the the units myself and and um i ended up at that point in time you know how we have like massive appreciation right now yeah there was zero back then like zero like if anything it was going the other way yeah and the only way to get appreciation was to rehab stuff so i rehabbed myself i didn't have the money to uh, pay anybody mm-hmm. so I, I would do everything myself i would go on youtube learn how to do certain things on youtube myself oh, and wow. <laughs> yeah so self-taught yeah exactly right so so then i uh i ended up doing that i ended up pulling some equity out of the the units that i rehabbed and i ended up uh, buying my, uh, buying a blender with it to start the nutritional company, like to manufacture for nutritional so products. I want to touch a little bit on mm-hmm. this nutrition. Um, why did you get into nutrition in the first place? Yeah. So, um, man, it, it, there, there was just nothing like what I wanted. So me personally, I started working out during that time and there was nothing that was like basic mm. available. So, so when I first started Canadian protein, again, it was called true supplements. It was more like basic stuff. It wasn't like that flashy chromed out containers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah, where yeah. Every, it was all like blinged out, like on the containers and a bunch of like salesy kind of stuff. Yeah. It was more, um, I wanted something a little bit more raw hmm. and there was nothing in Canada like that, like zero. So I, I ended up, uh, so I, I was like, well, if nobody's doing it, I was going to do it. Okay, so yeah, so I, I ended up starting uh, the supplement company because I wanted um, I wanted something for myself. Like it was something that I realized that would be a very interesting kind of uh, product mm-hmm. that was um, not only if I I knew that if I wanted it, there was going to be other people that wanted it. And then lo and behold, you know, my friends were you know started buying it from me, and my my family started buying. That's that's one tip that I I, I like to tell people a lot is if you do have an idea try to sell it to your friends and family. And if they don't want it, then probably you're going to rethink your idea. Maybe, maybe not, not always, but if, if, if there's something there, they'll, they'll buy it from you too. Right. And, and that, that they're the perfect, uh, they're the perfect kind of market research team or case study that you need to see if you have something or not. Right. They're, they're yeah. easy. They're right there. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah that's, and you know, how was the journey for this 12 years, right? You know, you took that small from a office to now like a global uh, protein company. Mm-hmm. So how was the journey? Like, you know, if, if, if I'm an entrepreneur, I want to do something, but I'm scared, like, you know, hey, it's, it's going to be easy or like it's, it's easy. How did you figure out, like, you know, what to do next, what to do next? Yeah. You, you just figure it out. Like you, you don't, there's no... Um Either you're too stupid to realize when you need the right help, or or you're 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 too egotistical to not get it, right? Yeah. So so in order to help you scale, you know you have to bring in the right people that understand how to do that for you, or or so that you can leverage their talents because you can't when you get to a certain point you can't do everything on your By own, yourself. yeah, right. Yeah. But in the beginning, you should do everything on your own. So I learned Photoshop myself. I learned how to do basic coding on wow. myself, on my own. Um, you know, it just because I, I couldn't pay anybody. I couldn't pay anybody to do anything. I was mixing myself, making the capsules myself, you know. So um, I was a jack of all trades because I didn't have the money to pay anybody to do it. And I, I see a lot of these people and they're like, yeah, I'm going to start this company. I'm just going to like pay everybody to do it so I can like, you know, really focus on like what I really like. And I'm like, motherfucker you're going to, you're not going nowhere. Like, because yeah. like, where, where's this money come from? Like people don't work for free. Like, yeah. what are you going to do? You're going to get some shit work done on Fiverr. Like, wh- what are you going to do? You can pay five bucks for shit. Like, I don't understand where the, this mentality is, is like, even in like the real estate game yeah. where people are like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to get like, uh, you know, you know, I want 50 units by next year. I'm just going to like have somebody else manage it so I can like really focus on scaling the portfolio. I'm like, you have no clue what you're talking about <laughs> like zero and they're all talking about all these acronyms and all this shit like i don't understand where where people come up with this kind of uh like yeah. i don't understand what this thought process is like people people are so 
yeah, entitled I, and and uh, you know they're they're not willing to like put in that kind of work these days. It's, yeah, it's unreal. I think I can relate to that. Like you know, and I was like totally new, right? Like you just hear these stories, success stories. You don't see the yeah. behind story. Yeah, you know, most of them started like working yeah. hard. So you know, another follow up question on that one, like you know, when did you knew that you need to bring on more people? You know, how did you? When did you realize? Yeah, so there's a couple there's a couple points when I kind of really realized um, that I knew I, I knew I needed the help was number one I started to kind of feel like I started to get drained right mm -hmm. and and it stopped becoming I don't want to say fun because none of this is like fun yeah but it started to become like mentally draining for me mm -hmm. and uh, and and w when that starts happening for me um, I stop. I stop putting in as much effort as it deserves. So I need, I, that's when I know I need to bring in the right people to kind of like breathe some new fresh life into the business. Right. And, and help me scale. Right. So, um, and then just simply when you're, when you get to the point where you're working like 16, 20 hours a day and you physically can't work anymore, yeah, that's when you bring some people in. And if you're not at that point yet, you don't really want it as bad as you think. That, yeah. that's, that would that's be my a, that's advice. That's a great advice. Yeah. You know, that, I'm actually, that's the advice I'm looking for, yeah. for myself. Yeah. Now that, thank you so much on that. Yeah. So, um, you know, and, and when this, where this Lambo came in, like, <laughs> because, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't even know how that even happened. I, I sold some, pro I sold actually property in the first portfolio that I, that I, I bought a couple mm -hmm. of years ago. I think it was like at four years ago at this point. Okay. And, uh, I was like, I'm going to buy a car. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. I bought my my first Lamborghini, and so you 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 bought pretty much with the money that you sold. Yeah, not not a, on a line of credit or not no. on a debt. No, I bought cash. So yeah. That's another thing, guys. Yeah. If you want to buy liabilities like that, you you gotta freaking. You gotta know you really gotta afford it. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. that shit will put you in a hole real quick. So how many Lambos you own now? Uh, right now I have one. I just, oh, okay. I sold a black one last year. I had. Do two. you have that yellow one? I have. I still have That's the yellow one. one. Yeah. So I've had. I've had four so far. So I've had. I, the first one was a white one. I had a black roadster. Um. Then I had uh, the black SV, and then I have this one now, the twin turbo. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. speed does it go? Like. How fast does it go? Yeah. Oh, I haven't maxed that. Thing. <laughs> I think it's fast. Like it's, it's like outrageously fast. Way too fast. But in in in, 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 our, <laughs> in our Canadian highways, like no, 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 not here. That's for sure. You can't be doing that shit here. You gotta, you gotta have, uh, yeah, you gotta, you want to start doing that stuff. You gotta, you gotta go with a cop or something, yeah, or have like a stash of their cards in your car or something. So, someone young who is dreaming of having a Lambo, what would you suggest them? Uh, you're gonna have to outwork me <laughs> because, like, if you don't have if you don't have that mentality, then it ain't gonna happen. Like, I, I don't think the, the pro the problem is, is, um, like education and knowledge and, and all that kind of stuff. Like everybody has access to that stuff. Now the variable these days is hard work. Yeah. If yeah. you're not willing to put in the work then, and it sounds so cliche, but it's so true because you, how many people do you know, have a master's degree and, uh, you know, an undergraduate degree and like education up the ass and, and, uh, you know, they have all these designations and they have, uh, you know, everything like that. Yeah, and all they're, the they're all the, the chip, yeah, yeah, all the book smarts and all yeah. that stuff. And they're just, they're, they're not there because they're not, they're not willing to put in that work. And they're also not willing to take the risk. Yeah. That's a big thing too. You have to be really willing to take the risk. Yeah, that's a mindset shift, right? Like yeah. even for me, I was working full time. Like yeah. I worked for five years and you know, I was scared to quit my job yeah. uh, because you know, wh wh what if it didn't work out? Yeah. What if, you know, that, that yeah. for years. And then like, mm -hmm. you know, when, I realized like, you know, I got to take risks sometime yeah, and yeah. then I would do it now or regret for life. Yeah. And I have seen yeah. my dad, like, you know, always regretting for not doing it. Mm -hmm. I love that mindset. You know, that's yeah. the thing guys. Like if, if you really want it, go do it. Yeah. Yeah. You have to take the risk. I, I work, I wake up every day scared. There's yeah. nothing different. Like, like I don't understand why, um, people try to preach like, you, you know, to, to try to get rid of the fear, like use the fear, like funnel yeah. it. Right. Like, cause you're never going to get rid of it. So like, it's not realistic to get rid of the fear cause life is scary and business is even scarier. And especially when you're in it on your own, because you have people that depend on you and you're depending on yourself to perform. So there's an outrageous amount of pressure. So it's never going to go away. Just deal with it. Yeah. Like you have to learn how to deal with it. Like I, I not, I, I don't, I don't remember one day that I didn't wake up thinking like, 
not, you know, something could like, listen, like you don't think I know there's people on my website right now thinking about how to take me out. Like yeah. it's happening right now. I know there is, but yeah. I'm just, I'm going to outwork them and I'm going to be smarter than them and I'm going to do a better job and they're not going to be able to do it. But that's a scary thing, right? So you have to like, you have to really be able to channel that fear into like a motivation. Yeah, and, no, and if I, I agree with that, right? you know, that's a mindset that you need, like, yeah. especially I, I, I used to think initially like, oh, f- this, mm, this is something that I'm, I'm scared every day. I'm, I'm working way more than what I wanted mm-hmm. to. How, do I really want to continue this way? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What would you tell yourself? Because now you got like, you know, good amount of solid wealth and, you know, solid business. What motivates to keep going? Like, I feel like what motivates me at this point is, um, I, I think it's important for people to live, uh, their life to their fullest potential because I think a couple things happen. Um, well, maybe the biggest thing that I think is the biggest, well, the biggest advantage to that I feel is, um, when you do that, you help inspire people and you help you, 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 you organically help more people along the way right by by default you you yeah. you create more jobs for people uh you know you you like i said you inspire people along the way and you know more often than not i feel like that ends up becoming the uh like the journey of that ends up becoming a very fulfilling aspect so um for me i feel like living to my fullest potential and trying to like develop as much success as i can for myself intrinsically helps more people than if I were to consciously help more people. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that yeah. totally makes sense. You're pretty much like self aware of yourself. You know, I want better life for myself and people around. For me. sure. And I, and I don't think like people might think that that's selfish, but, but I don't think so. I, I don't think that that's selfish. I, I think that people need to kind of, I think even change, um, their overall mindset of trying to, chase their passion or chase i hear this a lot too like chase their why and all this stuff and i'm just like go after the money because at the end of the day you know for you to try to chase a passion there's going to be two issues with that number one you're gonna you're gonna be too close-minded to anything else that might be an opportunity coming your way okay because how many passions like i I wanted to play in the nhl when i grew up Mm. like that didn't can happen so so you know what i mean like i was passionate about doing that shit well that that didn't happen so so if i were to kind of if i were to only like stick with that i would have lost out on a lot a lot of opportunity and uh the second issue with that is you can spend your whole life trying to chase your passion like chasing your passion is like telling somebody to like try to find the meaning of life like who the got the answer for that so, yeah. so, so I, I don't believe in that. And then, and then, you know, do it like, cha- you know, going after your why and all this stuff, like that shit naturally comes as, as you progress in that, that journey, like I just mentioned, you'll end up figuring it out. Yeah. So in the meantime, go after it now, build as much success as you can or, or do whatever you want to do. Um, whether it's, you know, chasing money or you want the car, go after the car. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I feel like that's such a faux pas in life. And I feel like people don't like to say that because it's, it sounds very, uh, egotistical, but it's reality. Like, yeah. why do people, like, what, what do you think people do this for? Like Dave's not over there working for free. Yeah. He- like what the, f- you know what I mean? So yeah. I don't understand why I, I don't get why people, um, try to really push that. I, I feel like people try to push that because it tries to keep them in this like endless loop. Or is you it know? like, you know, maybe uh, you were taught that way? Your parents? Said, no, you know, my parents are very not like that. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. Or, you know, I mean, like, you know, f- for myself, I have seen people around me who are always said, oh, no, no, you should not do that. You know, you, you, you would get into problems. Yeah. You, you, my, you, my parents are very, like, non-entrepreneurial. Yeah. Uh, they supported me and everything, but they're, they're not, like, no. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it just wasn't like that. It, it, it really so wasn't like that. It's, it's just, pretty much self-taught for... It ki- kind of is because a lot of times I would I, I, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out like, well, what's my passion and what's my why? Well, I, you know, I'm not really like that passionate about real estate and I'm not really that passionate about supplements and stuff like that. What, I'm, what I actually ended up finding out during the journey, like along the journey is I'm passionate about business. Mm-hmm. I love business, right? I love... I love the art of the deal. So I don't necessarily love real estate. I love 
the journey of the acquiring hotel. and you know due diligence and 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 uh, underwriting the process. yeah underwriting yeah, yeah. the properties and I love the process that's what I ended up you know figuring it out and that, that might change this is a moving target yeah you no, know that, like that's another thing right? to keep in mind yeah, yeah it's always changes it's always it always changes so like listen like in the beginning I was very passionate about supplements and real estate and stuff like that but in, in the end it be, it's a career yeah right when you're at it for 20 hours a day can it can it really stay your passion probably not yeah not right the- when you get beat up all the time it's it's it stops become you have to ha- so you have to end up developing thick skin to be able to withstand the adversity that these types of careers throw at you. Yeah, no, I think, you know, it, it, it applies for everything, like whether you're investing or, you know, whether you're selling or yeah. building a business, you just need to build those thick skin and build the habits and a mental, you know, toughness. For sure, 100%. Uh, yeah, no, that, that's, honestly, this is something that I learned a lot. Mm-hmm. That, so. Mm, before, like, you know, I want to jump into the next video mm-hmm. where, you know, talking more about your U.S. Uh, yeah. investing yeah. properties. Um, but I would say thank you for this one. Yeah. And in the next video, we'll be talking more about, you know, uh, how you got into the U.S. Yeah. market. You know, why yeah. did you choose, first of all, and all those things? For so, sure. Absolutely. Um, thank you so much, Dan. Yeah, absolutely, man. No problem. My pleasure. How did you like that story? Man, this guy is like... I. Just a normal person like us who just, you know, worked hard and smart and here he he is after 12 years. So if you're like, you know, aspiring, inspiring, whatever you call it, if you want something, go for it. Just like, you know, what he did, right? Like, you know, honestly, that, that was super motivating for me. If you were inspired as well, just let me know in the comments below and let me know, you know, what if you like this kind of stories um, that you want me to bring on more you know what you'd like to see more of um, videos on my channel so let me in the comments below with that check out the other videos and see you in the next video thank you